minding. Uh, I really want to talk about uh, the narrative that is coming for the next uh, probably year or so, um, which is going to be which central bank is looking to be the first to cut rates. And this is really important because it will determine which pairs you're looking to buy or sell. So, um, so yeah, let me get into this. Just let me know if you can see my pen tool. One second. Can you see this, by the way, guys? Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Uh, welcome, Lawrence, as well. Uh, let me just mute some of the mics. I think there's a little bit of feedback coming through on mine. Um, and Shady Advice is here as well. Welcome. Um, so just as, again, more of, a, more of an overview as to why um, rate cuts and overall why we're looking at divergences or maybe maybe to kind of look at it in terms of leading and lagging um, central banks in terms of rate cuts because as we know all uh, uh, basically paths and roads lead to interest rates right so interest rates INR right in terms of currency value <clears throat> And, and as well, you do have a uh, risk off sentiment, right? Risk off. So risk on and risk off, right? To the side. But typically, when you think about risk on, you're more concerned with uh, interest rates. And when you're thinking about risk off, the risk off side of things, uh, you're more concerned with, um, I guess, it's more sentiment, fear, you know, uncertainty, doubt, and safe haven and traders putting their money into where they think um, money, their money is going to be more protected. So all roads lead to interest rates, right? And the main things that determine whether a central bank is going to hike or cut rates or just keep rates on hold, right, is going to be what determines what happens with GDP and what happens with inflation. Now, inflation is really the, 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 the big unknown uh, traders. I mean, uh, central banks try to um, uh, manage inflation uh, via managing interest rates, but they also do the same thing with the economy, right? So they're intertwined. So depending on what happens with inflation um, and GDP, uh, you know, that would determine what happens with um, interest rates, right? And it's really important also as well to know that everything goes in a cycle, yeah? You have a GDP cycle, you have an inflation cycle. And again, that determines interest rate cycles. And so I'm not necessarily going to go into the details as to why, but just understand that this is historically what, you know, happens. You can go back um, and look, but this is, if you understand, you know, the, the, the relationship and you've done the short course and test, um, I think it's channel, was it channel 28, 27 or something like that? Um, if you submitted that to me, then you should know this. If not, then I definitely advise you to do this, right? And so um, GDP and inflation actually are correlated in a sense that whenever you have, in, in certain phases of the economic cycle, you will have either inflation or deflation, right? So for example, we have boom, we have contraction, we have recession, we have a uh, bust or slump phase, then you have the recovery, and then you have the expansion, and then you back to the boom phase again, right? And then it, you know, and then it continues on, then you're out here again, and then it goes back to contraction. Same thing with inflation, right? So inflation cycles, you usually get rising inflation, yeah, in the uh, in the recovery uh, expansion phase, in the boom phase of the economic cycle, yeah. And then you typically get deflation during the um, the re uh, contraction, recession, or bust or slump phase. Yeah, so you can actually um, actually could, uh, predict or forecast what is likely to happen with the economy, right? Depending on where inflation is likely going right because if we know that they're correlated we should be on this end of the cycle right because things are contracting and we're seeing inflation come down now which one leads and which one lags i haven't necessarily looked into 110 percent, but they're both correlated right so you, it for example you won't you you'll i don't think you'll ever see um and i don't want to say ever but um it's highly unlikely that you'll see deflation in a you know boom or, or recovery or expansion phase of the cycle just like you will 
probably likely unlikely to ever see um, deflation, uh, sorry, inflation or rising inflation in the uh, recession, you know, bust or slump phase, right, or the, or the contraction phase. And so um, where we are now, we're moving into the phase, we are moving into the stage of, if, if, if any of you have been with me for any length of time, maybe the past, uh, you know, year or two, we've been really kind of focused on the, um, on this side of the cycle, right? So with the, you know, recovery, expansion, stroke, you know, boom phase of things. Now we're coming into the contraction phase, you know, recessions, everyone's talking about recession next year and how, you know, pretty much most countries are likely to go into a recession. And so, um, again, interest rate cycles, and just to link this to interest rate cycles, interest rate cycles will again move in the same way, yeah? that um uh, uh for example with gdp and inflation right so if you know that these two are correlated right these two are correlated then the same thing should happen with interest rates right if you're in the if 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 you're in the phase where you're in the recovery expansion boom phase and inflation is rising above their two percent target of course yeah okay, because it got two percent target then interest rates are likely to be <laughs> are likely to rise right they like to hike interest rates and so if we're heading into the contraction, you know, uh, uh, recession, bust or slump phase of the, of, you know, the GDP cycle, the business cycle, therefore the inflation cycle, therefore in the interest rate hiking or, or cutting cycle, we should be on the cutting end, right? And you're seeing that play out right now, or if you're not seeing it play out, that is what all the big fuss is about, yeah? Is basically, where are we and what is the central bank likely to do in the future? You're seeing inflation come down, you're seeing um, signs that the economy is contracting, therefore you're seeing interest rates start to come down. And we know that interest rate cuts typically um, devalues a currency. Now the level of devaluation, because we trade uh, currencies together, right? for example, euro dollar, all right? The, 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 the question now becomes the nuance, which is who is likely to cut first and who is likely to cut last, yeah? And so the, per, the, the say the person, but the central bank um, that is likely to cut first, yeah, is the country that really you should look to, um, you should look to sell first, yeah? And we have a great, uh, really good, in fact, let me just uh, clear this. By the way, is everyone following? Is everyone following me? Is, is, is there any questions? Anyone got any questions that they want to ask? Yeah, no. If, if, if you want to ask any questions, then just, uh, you know, post it in the uh, in the chat. Um, now, this is, by the way, this was this is ING. And this is found in the, I think I'll, I'll put it in the bank, um, I think it's the bank research channel. But it's in one of the, it's either the bank forecast or the bank research channel that I put this in. And so this is, where we talk about, or where, you know, I'm talking about who's hiking, or uh, sorry, I should say, who's cutting first and who's expected to cut first, and for example, and, and also as well, the question is by how much, which also is um, a determinant value of, um, a determinant factor of value. This is what the um, ING are predicting, right? So what we've got is all the central banks, um, they think that the next move for the dollar is going to be in terms of a you know uh, a cut right is going to be may eurozone i think june bank of japan i think may is going to be probably the uh, one of the central banks that i trade is going to be a hike um i say i trade but we trade in terms of like we don't i don't necessarily trade you know uh these uh swedish corona for example or that uh, or the norway uh currency norwegian currency and again so we've got Cuts, cuts, and these are what is expected. Now, this is just one bank, by the way. Um, their word isn't gospel, so you have to do a bit more research in terms of um, looking for information where banks are telling you where they expect or what they expect to happen with each central bank. And it's not going to be easy, and sometimes the information isn't necessarily out there, but you know there are times where we can we can see that and um they've been actually talking about it or mentioning it quite a lot 
in Bloomberg articles. I don't know if anyone's mentioned, um, seen it, but um, you're starting to see a lot of um, uh, paragraphs uh, within articles that talk about swaps rates, right? Swaps of rates of pricing in uh, uh, rate hikes and cuts, etc. But when you see something like that, and I and I think I'll go over um, an example of that uh, a little bit later. Um, but basically, it's just uh, talking about whether. Um, the market is positioning itself for rate cuts sooner or later. Now, since this has been released, um, I have seen information that actually kind of contradicts this, right? Where you've got, in fact, they think that the um, economists and, and traders are betting on um, a later move for the United States, yeah? And an earlier move, in fact, this is now, I think it's like April, right? This is April um, rather than June. And so, um, yeah. So the point I'm trying to make is this, is first of all, you've got to get more of a consensus view, right? And secondly, why? The question is, well, why does the bank think or why do banks think that this is likely to happen? And again, this comes back to our understanding of economic cycles and where we are, right? And so... If we understand that um, if interest rates are coming down, oh, sorry, inflation is coming down, right, um, towards their 2% target, it means that the central bank are likely, uh, uh, unlikely to continue uh, uh, hiking rates, right? But then we have to look forward and say, well, if we're in this cycle, yeah, if inflation is coming down and we're probably heading towards deflation, then we automatically know that we're heading into a potential recession, which then means that, you know, we're going to look for cuts. And so it's understanding the data today, which has an effect of pricing, you know, over the next three, four, five, six months. Right. Even though I think it's already I think most of the pricing is actually um, or the forecasts are, are, are being priced in based on what's happening today. So as an example, <clears throat> Let's say, or this, you know, I throw out a bit of an easy question, right? If, if let's say, for example, GDP, or say GDP, but if unemployment, non-farm payrolls, right, comes out on Friday, comes out on Friday, and let's say it's a fantastic number in terms of employment, right? It's a really high number. What do you think the the market is likely to price in. Let's just say that currently it is pricing in a May cut, yeah? But let's say non-farm payrolls comes in and it's a fantastic number. Do you think that ING or, you know, banks in general are likely to move this expected cut in May towards April? or further out towards maybe June or July? Which way? June, July, they were considered delaying the rate cuts. Absolutely, right? That's exactly it, right? Towards August, right, exactly, towards this end, right? And the reason why we all instinctively know the reason why, but, or we say instinctively, but we know the logical reason why, but just to explain it for everyone and anyone who's watching this video, and it's because non-farm payrolls is an indicator um, of how GDP is doing, right? A gross domestic product. And typically in a, in a recession, you have lower employment and higher unemployment, right? But if employment is continuing to rise, yeah, that means that GDP may not be heading into the recession as soon as maybe the market is pricing in or how, you know, whoever expects, right? A recession maybe in, if, if a recession is expected, for example, in, in you know, May or June, right? Then that's going to have to be pushed back, yeah? In terms of, well, it might, the recession may not happen in May or June anymore. It might happen in, um, you know, uh, July or August, which then, again, we overlay that with understanding, okay, well, if that's the case, then in fact, the interest rate cycle should also be delayed, yeah? And so, um, because there's no really need for the central bank to cut rates if the 
um, the economy is doing um, okay or better than expected. Of course, you do have to overlay that with inflation, but if inflation is going down to their 2% target, I think we're at, what are we at? 3.2% or something like that, quarter on quarter. And if it's starting to come down still, but the, infl but the economy is doing okay, then we are likely to not have to cut sooner. Now, if non-farm payrolls comes out as being, you know, terrible, for example, or below, way below the uh, the forecasted number, that is basically the opposite, right? That the economy is contracting because we've got low employment and potentially, depending on the unemployment numbers, if that comes in higher, then, you know, then the market is going to price in uh, April. But depending on where we are, right, depending on where we are on this time horizon, in terms of when is the first expected cut and also how many cuts, right? Because in fact, you still, you also got ING who are forecasting uh, more cuts than, than Europe, which is again, a bit of a um, bit of a strange one, but um, that is also a factor because the more cuts, the more devaluation, the, 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 the least amount of cuts, the least amount of devaluation, right? And so, we need to keep an eye on the data, which we always do anyway, but it's this is the reason why the data we look at is very significant and we can get a, a, a better understanding as to which pairs we should be trading, right? De dependent upon what we are, our understanding of um, GDP, inflation, interest rates, what's happening, and so if we had good GDP news, we're likely to push back um, on the, uh, the, uh, the rate cut. Also as well, if inflation, right, if inflation comes out, you know, higher than expected, yeah, or remains sticky, for example, and is not heading towards their 2% target, yeah, then that is also going to um, cause... Uh, the central bank or, or, or forecasts about what central banks are likely to do with their cuts to be pushed further into the future. And why is that? Why would stickier inflation cause central banks or, you know, uh, I say central banks, or yeah, actually central banks to uh, maybe actually cut a bit later? Anyone want to hazard a guess? Simple stuff. I know you guys know it, but just to double check. Hold for longer. Pretty much, yeah. Very succinct, um, Alexandros. Thank you very much. That's have to, they have to hold for longer, right? So they don't have to necessarily cut so much, or they might even have to hike in the case of the Australian dollar, but um, if inflation stays sticky or the New Zealand dollar, but um, pretty much they're holding for longer. So then the cut will come later, right? So they'll be holding, they're holding December, January, February, March, April. If inflation is stickier today, right? And inflation is not coming down to their target, then they may have to hold for longer while inflation does get down to their 2% target. So this is basically what is going on. And so um, just in case anyone was, uh, was confused or was unsure as to what is going on, in terms of what the narrative now is and what it's likely to be or very highly probable likely to be in uh, in the future of course you do have risk off um sentiment as well um but from a fundamental perspective this is the game plan this is what we always need to keep our eye on and uh, and certain data so daniel says so higher inflation expectations will become entrenched and central uh, banks uh, lose credibility too that's another thing that's more uh, again more nuanced than talking about credibility there was a um there was an article uh, that i did post on the bank of canada talking about their credibility on inflation and the reason why credibility is important is because 